he's here at number three. He's got a career of 27, 7, and 4. He shoots from three-pointers at 40%. He's seven feet tall. He moves. We're talking about Christoph Porzingis having great ball handling skills. Durant on another level with that as well. Yeah, um, and I think that's one that, element of his game that's forgotten is how good of a ball handler he was like even saying the 27 and 7 that's expected but the four assists over his career um again that's usually his career. yeah that's usually a skill like his first few years it's going to be much lower and develops over time too where it did exactly where kevin Six last year. yeah where i was about to say kevin durant year over year i'm not you to say at minimum kevin durant's going to put up 25 7 and 6 i would say again is what Kevin Durant and minimum is going to do. And we're just talking about Tatum putting up 25, 10, and 5. If he could do that for a whole year. Oh my God, amazing. That's what Durant does for his career, basically. So That's what Durant does when he goes to work in the morning. That's exactly. just how he puts his shoes on. And it, let alone the fact, like, if we get into his percentages, it's like you almost don't need to because you know how good of a shooter he is. We talked about Burton's. We talked about, we talked about Carmelo. We talked about uh, some of the great shooters at this position. But, I mean, ultimately, in terms of anywhere on the floor, you get this ball the guy and you give him even the tiniest bit of space, the ball is going in. He's going Kevin, over your head. Yeah, Kevin Durant's the guy. I mean, even in your face, it usually doesn't matter. Kevin Durant easily when he was healthy the best scorer in the league one of the only players we've seen in the 21st century to have a year that he put up over 30 per game yeah. one of the only guys who could truly give lebron james an argument and not the best player on the planet yeah and not even in terms over the last 20 years lebron probably wins it based on all the championships whatever but in terms of a certain year saying this guy was better that year kevin durant very justifiable had a in the conversation years. absolutely um who as much criticism as he's ever gotten to always finds a way to overcome it oh he can't win okay well yeah sure he went and joined a winner but it's not like he didn't play hard teams to back get... to back finals mvp yeah back to back finals mvp yeah and like i said sure he joined the winner but yes he was the mvp and he still beat a lebron james team that guess what beat that team without durant the year before so ultimately, Durant is clearly what put them over the hurdle. He would put any team over the hurdle. He's going to make Brooklyn one of the hardest teams in the East to play against as long as he's One of the best teams in the league. Yeah, and I think the only reason he finds himself three is, yes, he did have that injury that that factors into this because it is a list of who is likely going to have the best year. And I think Durant might have a little bit of a, like I said, less productive where it might be like a 25-point, seven rebound, whatever, on assist. But that's not saying that Kevin Durant can't go up to 28 points per game. And if he does, that he's probably, again, the best player because you just can't defend him when he's actually scoring in volume. Like, when Kevin Durant finds his rhythm, there's just, again, it, there's no one like him in that regard. He averaged 27 and a half with OKC, and he still averaged 26 on Golden State, a team that had a little guy named Steph Curry. Um, they had Clay Thompson. They had Draymond Green. They had Iguodala. They were a great team in their own right without him. They won 72 games. They might have lost to LeBron, but they won 72 games without him. But he was the player that took them to the next level. I love Curry as a player, and I know he won back-to-back -back MVPs, but Durant was the best player on that team. Durant went to the best team in the league and became the best player. Durant would go to any team in the league and become the best player. He'd go to L.A., probably become the best player because LeBron would be smart enough to say, hey, I'm going to pass you the ball because you're a better shooter than me. He, he brings all these things. He's still one of, one of the most – I would say one of the most mobile, but I don't know. He got a really big injury two years ago. Yeah, we don't know what he's going to come back at, and that's my only reason why I had a number three. To me, he could be the best player on the planet any given day like we've talked about. He's got all the tools. He is that he, – he's got that height. He can jump over anyone. He can move around the court. He shoots the ball like he's a guard. He handles like he's a guard. He can play in the post. He can do any little thing that – he's asked to do he's the best player or one of the best players on the planet but we just don't know what he's going to come back as yeah if he comes back even at 75 percent of the player kevin durant was he's still a third best power forward but if he comes back at 100 percent, what kevin durant could be he could easily be the mvp and the best player in the league again next year hands down yep and i mean this is a guy who even just looking at it year over year a huge knock on him coming into the year. Oh, he's he's so scrawny. Just his his build. He's lengthy. He doesn't have strength to him. He, and I feel like we have him ranked at power forward, and people might even comment saying, "Oh, he can hang in with certain." Like he can. Yeah. He could very much hang yeah. in with 
these guys now. He has no problem being physical nowadays. His blocks over the last three years have been the highest number of blocks he's had in his entire career. He almost had two blocks per game two years ago, and yep. he hasn't come close to that in any of the years in OKC. So this is a guy, again, who has no problem po po positioning himself in the paint now, grabbing the ball, swatting the ball away, making his presence felt, and we're definitely going to see in Brooklyn, like me and you have spoken about, we have him power forward, because they're probably going to run some type of lineup with uh, Irving, Harris. Her, Harris, Durant, Allen, and I mean, on paper, that five is one of the best starting fives in the league, hands down. You have five guys there who are some of the best at their position. What, what I find horrible over in Brooklyn is that someone like Kyrie Irving thinks he's on the same plan as Kevin Durant just because he played at LeBron James. Kyrie Irving is sitting there thinking that he's top shit, that the team's going to run this way. We don't need a coach because me and Durant, we're going to play our own way. Iso ball, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Durant, didn't do, Durant did that a little bit at Golden State, but he, he bought into the team in Golden State that made them so successful. I still think Brooklyn's going to be successful no matter what. But Kyrie's got to simmer down on the talk of I'm on the same level as Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's on a whole another ball game that 99.9% .9 of players in this league can't keep up to. I would say Kyrie, maybe you're discrediting it a bit, or I think anyone he's who's great, but I, he's not a top, top five player in the league. Maybe not top five, but also at the same time, I feel like anyone who's ever played with Kyrie is just just raves about how good he is with and without the ball. I feel like a lot of time we don't see it because Kyrie a lot of the time either has to do too much or he's injured or like you said he's so we'll, we'll talk about Kyrie whenever it's point guard time. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, no. In terms of Durant, I mean the only reason again that like I said the number he's not any higher. Yeah, is because I do think we'll see a, a bit less because that team is so deep. And also when looking at it, like it's the other guys are justifiable.